This instructional program has been prepared to assist you with the proper operation and maintenance of the Codman ICP monitoring system. This video program is not intended to replace the product inserts. Rather, it is to be used along with the product inserts as a training aid. Please refer to the product inserts and read the sections on contraindications, warnings, and cautions. Codman, a Johnson & Johnson company and a leader in the development of neurosurgical products for over 150 years, has designed a simple, highly accurate, and versatile way of monitoring intracranial pressure, the Codman ICP Monitoring System. This system consists of an ICP Express unit, a cranial access kit, and three intracranial pressure monitoring kits, each designed for a specific application. The ICP Express is a digital intracranial pressure monitor that also serves as an interface between the Codman microsensor ICP transducer and external patient monitors. The cranial access kit is designed to create the initial access hole, which is required for ICP monitoring and for CSF drainage procedures. The basic kit and the skull bolt kit are designed for subdural and intraparenchymal pressure monitoring. The microsensor ventricular catheter kit is designed for intraventricular pressure monitoring and CSF drainage applications. As an ICP monitor, the ICP Express incorporates an LCD screen, which provides a continuous display of systolic, diastolic, and mean ICP. This allows the unit to be used as a bedside or transport monitor. As an interface unit, the ICP Express calibrates patient monitors, zeroes the microsensor transducer, and generates a real-time output signal for viewing the ICP waveform on external monitors. Use of the system is simplified because setup and operating instructions can be found directly on the screen, thereby eliminating the need for manuals or guides that may not be available when you need to use the system. All of the ICP Express's functions, including zeroing and patient monitor calibration, are activated with one-touch key operation. This affords simple, quick equipment setup for monitoring ICP. The ICP Express also offers universal compatibility with a wide variety of patient monitors, so patients can be moved throughout the hospital or to other facilities. The cable that is provided with the unit is designed with an inline memory computer chip that retains the microsensor zero offset number, so ICP Express units can be interchanged easily. The unit is available in either 110 volt or 220 volt configurations and is equipped with a hospital grade plug as well as a built-in rechargeable battery that is good for up to three hours of operation. Low battery conditions are alerted by both audible and visual alarms. To operate the ICP Express, first make sure that all the cables are connected. The power cable and the microsensor transducer cables are supplied with the unit. Ensure that the white center line on the cable is aligned with a corresponding mark on the ICP Express connector and snapped into place. By using the switch on the back of the unit, the LCD screen can be backlit in order to more easily read ICP data. The monitor cable you use will depend on the type of patient monitors used in the hospital. They will have to be ordered separately through your Codman representative. Begin by using the on-off key to turn the unit on and wait for the screen to prompt you with instructions. If the ICP Express is connected to a patient monitor, the screen will prompt you to zero the monitor. Proceed to zero the monitor according to the manufacturer's instructions. Verify that the patient monitor displays a numeric mean ICP of zero and press the menu enter key. Next, you must calibrate the patient monitor by pressing the 20 or 100 key labeled calibrate patient monitor. Use the 20 key whenever the patient monitor scale is less than 100 millimeters of mercury. You should see a 20 millimeters of mercury signal displayed on the patient monitor. Press the menu enter key when calibration is complete. Connect the microsensor and wait for the message. Press zero to zero transducer. Then place the microsensor tip in sterile water and press the blue zero key labeled zero transducer. The microsensor zero offset number will be displayed on the ICP Express screen. This offset number is frequently called the reference number and is specific to the transducer that you have just zeroed. 
It is also recorded electronically onto the EEPROM memory chip in line with the transducer cable. Care must be taken to record this zero offset reference number in the patient chart and on the microsensor connector. Press the menu enter key. The microsensor ICP transducer is now ready for implantation. Once zeroed and implanted in the patient, the microsensor can be disconnected from the ICP express either at the unit itself or at the cable connection. When the transducer is reconnected, a zero offset reference number will appear on the screen and you'll be prompted to accept or adjust the number. If the number matches the number recorded initially, press the menu enter key to accept. If the number does not match, you can adjust it by using the arrow keys adjacent to the menu enter key. The menu enter key allows access to additional functions such as activating the alarm, setting alarm limits, manually zeroing the transducer. The ICP Express allows the user to program low and high limit alarms for the mean ICP, providing a warning to the staff of predetermined patient conditions. An alarm suspend key also allows a quick means to eliminate the sound for two minutes once the patient's condition is acknowledged. Note that entering and exiting the main menu screen will turn the menu item selected on and off. To set alarm limits, press the menu enter key to bring up the main menu screen. Use the arrow keys to select alarm limits and press the menu enter key. The high alarm limit will be displayed on the screen. Use the arrow keys to increase or decrease the alarm setting. Press the menu enter key to enter the value. The low alarm limit will now be displayed on the screen. Use the arrow keys to increase or decrease the alarm setting. Press the menu enter key to enter the value. The ICP Express also provides the ability to adjust the transducer zero reference value while ICP monitoring is in progress. This should only be considered when and if the displayed value is different from the value recorded on the microsensor connector or the patient's chart. Press the menu enter key to bring up the main menu screen. Use the arrow keys to position the cursor on the manual zero line and press the menu enter key. Use the arrow keys again to change the three digit reference number displayed on the screen. Press the menu enter key to enter the adjusted reference number and return to the standard display mode. The Codman ICP monitoring system. It's accurate, durable, easy to use, and above all, it was designed to meet the high standards of both clinicians and patients. Codman's Cranial Access Kit includes all the necessary components to create the initial access hole for ICP monitoring and CSF drainage procedures. When making the initial access hole, begin by shaving, prepping, and draping the patient. Make the necessary incision and retract the scalp to expose the skull. Now select the appropriate drill bit. The 5.8 millimeter bit should be used for ventriculostomy procedures or with a plastic skull bolt kit, 82-6632. The 2.7 millimeter bit should be used for subdural and intraparenchymal procedures or with a metal skull bolt kit, 82-6638. Place the bit into the chuck. Then hold the drill handle in place and turn the chuck counterclockwise to tighten the bit. Next, loosen the drill guide with the appropriate hex wrench. And carefully slide the drill guide towards the tip of the bit until the desired skull depth is reached. It is important to note that the drill guide will not stop the drill. It is designed only to provide the neurosurgeon with a marker for drilling depth. Finally, tighten the drill guide in place with a hex wrench and begin drilling. The Codman Microsensor Basic Kit includes a microsensor and a 14 gauge TUI needle with stylet. To measure ICP utilizing the subdural approach, begin with a microsensor already zeroed and connected to the required cables and monitor. Create the burr hole through which the microsensor will be placed with a 2.7 millimeter drill bit, which is included in the drill kit. 
bevel the burr hole edge on the side where the microsensor will exit. This will facilitate removal of the microsensor. Use the TUI needle to tunnel under the scalp from the burr hole site to the desired microsensor exit site. Remove the TUI needle stylet and thread the microsensor from the tip of the needle until the appropriate length for placement exits from the hub. The inner edges of the TUI needle are sharp, so exercise caution while threading the microsensor through. Gently remove the needle and estimate the length of the microsensor from the tip to the first kink. Once again, retract the burr hole site and fold back the microsensor completely at the desired bend site to leave a kink in it. Avoid touching the microsensor diaphragm. Place the tip of the microsensor under the dura and opposite the beveled burr hole. Carefully pull back the excess line. The kink should be at the bottom of the burr hole. To ensure accurate subdural ICP monitoring, the sensing element must be facing the cortex. Failure to position the sensing element facing the cortex may result in inaccurate ICP readings. Secure the microsensor to the scalp to provide additional strain relief by making a small loop with the line and gently suturing the loop down. Close and dress the incision site. To measure ICP via the intraparenchymal approach, begin with the microsensor already zeroed and connected to the required cables and monitor. Create the burr hole through which the microsensor will be placed with a 2.7 millimeter drill bit, which is included in the drill kit. Bevel the burr hole edge on the side where the microsensor will exit. This will facilitate removal of the microsensor. Use the TUI needle to tunnel under the scalp from the burr hole site to the desired microsensor exit site. Remove the TUI needle stylet and thread the microsensor from the tip of the needle until the appropriate length for placement exits from the hub. The inner edges of the TUI needle are sharp, so exercise caution while threading the microsensor through. Gently remove the needle and estimate the length of the microsensor from the tip to the first kink. Once again, retract the burr hole sight. Fold the microsensor forward once at the desired bend site to leave a kink in it. Avoid touching the sensor diaphragm. Place the tip of the microsensor in the parenchyma through the puncture in the dura until the kink is at the top edge of the hole. Carefully pull back the excess slack. Secure the microsensor to the scalp. For additional strain relief, make a small loop with a line and suture it down. Close and dress the incision site. Codman's microsensor skull bolt kit includes a microsensor, a skull bolt, a dura piercing obturator, and a spacing washer. To measure ICP utilizing the intraparenchymal approach, begin with the microsensor already zeroed and connected to the required cables and monitor. Use the drill bit included in the microsensor skull bolt kit to perform a craniostomy. Remember that the microsensor skull bolt kit is contraindicated for children of one year or less. The microsensor skull bolt comes pre-assembled with a spacing washer, which may be discarded if not required. Put the skull bolt in position and turn it clockwise until the spacing washer rests against the outer table of the skull. Loosen the cap adapter on top of the bolt by turning it counterclockwise. Make a puncture in the dura to establish an assured path between the bolt and the intraparenchymal area. Irrigate the channel with non-bacteriostatic preservative-free sterile saline. Insert the microsensor through the bolt to the desired depth. Secure the microsensor to the bolt by turning the adapter clockwise. Close the incision and dress the wound site. 
To remove the bolt, begin by removing the sutures that are closest to the stem. Then remove the micro sensor. Turn the bolt counterclockwise until it's free. Make sure that the spacing washer, if used, has been removed from the incision site before closing. Apply pressure with a sterile gauze until hemostasis is achieved. Close the incision site and apply a dry sterile dressing. The microsensor ventricular catheter kit includes a microsensor ICP transducer preloaded into a ventricular catheter and a tunneling trocar. To measure intraventricular pressure, begin with the microsensor already zeroed and connected to the required cables and monitor. Perform the craniostomy using the 5.8 millimeter drill bit, which is included in the Codman cranial access kit. Gently bevel the burr hole on the side where the catheter exit site will be. Make a cruciate puncture in the dura. Place the ventricular catheter in the trocar tube and tunnel it under the scalp from the desired exit site towards the burr hole. Remove the trocar. Depending on surgeon preference, the 10 gauge ventricular needle may first be used to locate the ventricle. Advance the catheter into the lateral ventricle, making sure to enter the skull at a right angle. Verify that the tip of the ventricular catheter is situated in the ventricle by removing a cap on the drain port and allowing CSF to flow out, and then recap the drain port. Bend the catheter in place and gently withdraw the preloaded stylet. Hold the ventricular catheter in place securely and pull any slack on the catheter away from the incision site. Secure the catheter to the scalp at the exit site. A removable suture clip is provided. Close and dress the incision site. Additional sutures may be placed through the holes located at the Y connector at the distal end of the ventricular catheter. If you so choose, you may attach the drain port of the ventricular catheter to a ventricular drain system. All of the Codman ICP monitoring kits are intended for single use only and should not be re-sterilized under any circumstances. Please refer to the product inserts for more specific information about the setup and operation of any of the components that make up the Codman ICP monitoring system. Or call your Codman representative.